The Home Builders Association of East Central Illinois is building a high performance, certified green home on Horizon Road in Urbana. Green building means incorporating environmental considerations and resource efficiency into every step of the home building and land development process to minimize environmental impact. It's a practical response to a variety of issues that affect all of us, like increasing energy prices, waning water resources, and changing weather patterns. It means making intentional decisions about energy efficiency, water conservation, resource conservation, indoor environmental quality, site design, homeowner education, and green business practices. Building performance is a growing industry nationwide. The rising cost of energy, increased interest in indoor air quality, ongoing demand for better comfort, and timeless concern for building durability require that we focus on building science more than ever. I'm Tony Oliver, Building Performance Manager at Lands Heating and Cooling. I'm a home energy rater, certified building analyst, and your host for today's program. If you'd like to join us in our mission to help make America energy independent, the first step is understanding energy. So I'm here today at Urbana Public Television with Kirk Skelton of the Atkins Group in Urbana. And uh, Kirk is going to enlighten us on some of the framing aspects of the construction job because our carpenters couldn't be on TV. Is that right? That is correct. So who, who are the, the carpentry contractors and why couldn't they be here today? Well, our, our carpenters are uh, Amish and part of their religion is basically they cannot be filmed. So I'm taking the place on the framing aspect of going through some of the items that we've done for design to be green uh, and also energy efficient. So we had one company frame up uh, or panelize the sections of walls and another company installed them on site? That is correct. So who, uh, who did the fabrication? Uh, the fabrication was uh, done by RNN Components and the uh, framing labor was performed by uh, Miller Construction. Mm -hmm. Both of Arcola, Tuscola? Uh, RNN Components is out of Tuscola and Arcola is for Miller uh, Construction. So the, uh, the Horizon Green Build that we're working on is a uh, project of the Home Builders Association of East Central Illinois. So kind of all the contractors are pitching in. What is Atkins Group's role in this whole project? Well, obviously the Atkins Group is part of the uh, a member of the Home Builders Association. Um, Father, your son Jesus is my best friend. Uh, Mike is active uh, chairman. Mike Martin. Uh, yeah, Mike Martin for the board. Um, so our role is is kind of everyone's pitching in as far as the builders. We've got uh, Nicole Thompson. She's done a lot. You've got Petty John. Uh, so basically all the local builders that are part of the Home Builders Association have all taken sections of this project and trying to help put it all together and facilitate it to where we can put together a schedule and construct the home. Um, most of the information just comes to me and then I'll put the contracts together, the purchase orders together, and we decide on the materials collectively as a, as a board. They'll decide on what materials are being used. Um, the design, this whole process has actually been decided by the board. So it's actually been a, a pretty good project so far. So virtually all of the actual work being done on site is done by one or another company in the association, not just the administrative work, but all the, all the nails being driven too. Um, it, not exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, you have a, a lot of the builders are coming together when I guess I should clarify, they're helping put together some, the information gathering process to put the contracts and purchase orders together. The actual work that's being performed uh, in most cases, yes, they are a part of the, or a member of the Home Builders Association, uh, but not all. Um, and we have, like for framing, for instance, you have Miller, RNN Components did the uh, prefabrication, RNN Components uh, worked with us on the truss, pre prefabricated trusses. Um, you have ProBuild, Armstrong Lumber, uh, and RP Lumber have worked with us on the, the materials to do all of the prefabrication and framing, loose uh, material included. So there's collectively a lot of different subcontractors and vendors and have been involved to so make it work. The, the basis of green construction or green design 
energy efficiency design is design, of course. So we mm -hmm. have an architect working on this project as well. Yes, Gina Pataglia was the architect uh, that worked with us on this project. And I think she's done a great job with the design. And some of the the major differences between how this house is framed up and how a conventional house would be framed up would be the double wall structure, uh, the energy heels, a few other uh, details. Explain the double wall and why that's beneficial to energy efficient construction. Well, the double wall with the airspace, I think, it, the airspace makes is very important to the double wall. For one, the double wall system, you have two two by four walls completely insulated uh, throughout, 11 and a half inch um, space, filled with cellulose insulation. The airspace keeps the thermal bridging from going back and forth, and it also, the thermal bypass, uh, is completely filled with dense pack, netted, dense pack cellulose insulation. So I think there's a huge benefit on the R factor, air infiltration, and just the um, thermal bridging, not having the walls touch from outside to inside. So for people who aren't familiar with these terms, a thermal bridge is a solid member that heat can just move right through. For example, in conventional construction, there may be a wall and a studs in that wall, and heat can just travel right through those studs. Sometimes we'll walk into an existing home, an older home, and we'll see some ghosting on yeah. the studs, and you can actually see where the studs are because that spot gets a little bit colder and some moisture settles out right on that spot and then the dust collects on the moisture. So you can actually see the poor efficiency in some of the older homes before all these ideas came about. But in the green build, we're using two wall sections with mm -hmm. airspace in between. So there's no solid material going all the way through to conduct that heat or at least um, until it reaches the floor system. The has to go all the way through. Right. So that's our th thermal, our thermal bridge. Uh, any solid material that would go through in a thermal uh, bypass. A thermal bypass. Thank you. <laughs> it is anywhere that air can move through. So yes. we're we're taking extra care to try to get this house as tight as possible. Yes, I mean, uh, along with that, uh, you have all the uh, exterior penetrations. You know that create the thermal bypass, um, such as your outside receptacles or maybe your line set to an air conditioner or a heat pump um, or just a, a light mounted to the outside. I think we take special care in treating those areas um, prior to the insulation. We'll seal them up with foam and make sure that there's no air infiltration coming from those penetrations. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, the whole system has to work together but I think it's very important for the thermal bypass to treat all of the penetrations independently and seal them completely. So when we're, when we're looking to build a green build, we not only want the building to be energy efficient, but we have to have sustainable materials. So there's a lot of engineered lumber that goes into this building. What is engineered lumber and why is that more green than the old way of building? Well, obviously you have your engineered lumber, which is a byproduct from the sawmills that, you know, they'll basically utilize the waste um, and make OSB, which is oriented strand board for your roof sheeting, wall sheeting, eye joist um, from pair lamps to micro lamps, uh, all structural material. So I think because it's a byproduct, obviously that's what makes it green. Um, the fact is, is most engineered lumber is actually stronger than dimensional lumber, which allows you to have greater spans um, and spans greater than your typical 16 inches on center, which uses less material. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole process, just working together and the design of it, um, there, that is the benefit of the engineered lumber. Pretty impressive that two carpenters can just pick up a 25 foot span and carry it, <laughs> which you Much really lighter. couldn't do with a two by 12, no, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, first of all, couldn't get the material like that and then, right. and then couldn't carry it. So in decades past, this is material that would have literally gone into the furnace, into the boiler to generate steam, to actually run these steam powered sawmills that we used to have, which surprisingly only uh, went offline a few years ago. But now that the sawmills are so much more efficient, we can use all that material and have less of an impact on the forest. That's correct. 
So th this being a green home, uh, we have to wonder sometimes, what does green even mean? There's got to be some kind of standard. What kind of standard are we meeting with this uh, uh, Horizon Green Build? Yeah, we're, we're meeting the NAHB um, Green Build Standard uh, with the intent of achieving the gold certificate. Um, so far, we, you know, you basically you fill out the information and it tells you where you're at on each category. I'm a little vague on the entire process of that, but we had some help with Ferrari. Bellamonte from Prairie Installation that, that helped us through that process. Um, we have run through that process and we know that if we do everything we say we're going to do, we will achieve the gold certificate. Um, it's, we're still learning uh, day by day with help from you and Fiori and a bunch of other people, you know, helping us look at the job site, making sure we're doing the right things from, and it goes much further than framing, you know, from your landscaping, uh, to the types of material you're using for finishes, uh, doors, windows, all of that collectively together is what achieves the gold certificate. Even all the garbage has to be separated yeah. so Recycling. the recyclable materials can be recycled. Yes. Uh, for people who've really never seen us build a conventional home, it might kind of surprise to see, surprise people to see how much trash goes out of a conventional construction site. Absolutely. Probably in the upwards of of 60 to 80 yards of uh, trash um, that makes it to the landfill. Uh, based on recycling and, and making the conscious effort to recycle, you'll notice on our project we have several bins from plastics to metals to cardboard uh, to one that actually will go to landfill to wood. Um, and I can honestly say today we're, you know, past the framing stage. We have uh, less than eight yards have actually made it to the landfill, which I've, is very impressive. I've noticed very little trucks in and out of there. Right. So I saw them actually show up with a conventional packer truck like we would expect to see, pick up garbage. They were there to pick up the wood. They packed it right, right in the truck and took it out of there. Absolutely. And uh, all that material gets reused by the, uh, the recycler. I assume that they know what, what secondary markets to send that stuff to. Absolutely. They'll mulch it up, basically. So this home is built to the HBA Green Standard, the National Home Builders Association Green Standard, which has been accepted by the International Code Council as the green code now for those who choose to build to the green code. Mm -hmm. It's called ICC 700. So um, back to the main framing features of this house. We've got our double wall so that we can super insulate the wall, and then we have other provisions in the attic for more insulation? Yeah, the, uh, the biggest provision was the raised energy heel, um, which basically allows the insulation, the full depth of insulation, to carry out to the edge of the wall plate. So this is a roof truss that's a little taller at the heel portion right there above the wall. Correct, because usually it tapers down and you can only get like three and a half, four inches of coverage uh, to where with the raised energy heel, the intent is to get more than a foot of coverage. And when you're going to a very energy efficient home, you're starting to split hairs there on energy efficiency. Um, if you have one little spot in the corner of the wall that's not insulated well, that's where it's going to get cold. Right. And that's where moisture is going to condense and that's where you're going to start having problems. Because we, we can't move a whole lot of air through this house, just the amount that is needed for proper ventilation. So uh, we can't have cold spots. Absolutely. So what are the insulation levels in this home? Are you familiar with that or is that? Uh... Yeah, the, uh, the wall assembly itself is um, 45. It's an R45. Um, it has an effective or performance value of, of 50. Uh, the attic insulation is an R60, which is all of its 100% cellulose, uh, which is a recycled product. Um, extremely green. It's great for sound, great for fire, great for insects. Um, it, it's just a great product. Um, but I'd say in, in any of the penetrations or foam in any areas that we could not get cellulose insulation, we use, utilize the foam to fill the areas and voids that we mm -hmm. couldn't physically get the cellulose insulation into, such as your rim board area, or your box sill, um, areas that had to be drilled through the subfloor based on the framing just couldn't get to it any other way. Those areas were actually foamed. So there are some 
some small tight spaces between a couple joists trapped by, literally trapped by some concrete on the bottom where right. we actually have to get into. Uh, I've inspected a lot of homes where you see it, they just get forgotten sometimes and now you have a rim Definitely joist with happen. no insulation on it and uh, we end up having to call the insulators back which is why energy auditors exist to, to check up on those things that people didn't know had gone wrong. Right. And uh, it, it turns out really that a new home is going to be a much more energy efficient than a home built even 20 years ago and yes. it turns out more green anyway because a lot of the materials that we're using just for efficiency or just for simplicity's sake and cost effectiveness sake happen to be greener materials anyway like the engineered lumber right i, I would say codes just the general practice of codes uh, have created a more energy efficient home uh, obviously we're under the 2009 IECC um, all of that whether you go prescriptive or performance based on that you are building a greener home simply by code <laughs> than what you were doing three years ago and this is also in addition to being a NAHB green home is an energy star home energy yep. star homes of course is an above code program homes that are at least 15 percent more efficient than energy code uh, I haven't seen the actual numbers on this house yet, but uh, it's intended to be twice as efficient as an energy code home? Twice as efficient or more, hopefully, with, with uh, the design and the mechanical equipment and things that we have decided to utilize. Uh, with the R values that we're choosing, we're hoping that it's more than 50%, uh, but I haven't seen the testing yet either. We haven't done the testing. Right. So here are our containers now, and I've been kind of monitoring what goes into mm -hmm. these containers, and, and they do make mistakes, and someone, maybe you, has been going back and taking some of the times. materials out. I, I saw some drywall in there this morning, so now there's somebody's going to end up having to take that drywall out, which is eminently recyclable. People do put it in their gardens. I think locally the farmers are taking recycled drywall, putting that on their field in, in lieu of the lime that they yeah, otherwise would buy and, and use. So like any other home, and, and maybe people don't necessarily know how a home goes together, green or not, of course we're going we're gonna to start out with the concrete phase, uh, the foundation phase, going with the beams, the, the flooring system, and this is kind of how the, this presentation, this show is progressing from phase to phase to phase in the construction. Yeah, I mean, basically, obviously, the, from the beginning, once we got past the, the design of the floor systems and the plan and everything was basically put together, um, one of the things that I wanted to mention, like, a part of the green build is, from the very beginning, was having the utilization of a crane that actually kept us from disturbing the soils as minimal as possible. And that started with the foundation through the framing. Uh, one, of, one of the things that we're very used to and accustomed to in the framing aspect is having a material handler on site at all times. Um, building this project it was one, one thing that we actually dif differed from is, is we decided to have a crane unload all of our products, all of our materials, uh, and eliminated the use of uh, a material handler running around the job site tearing up the soil conditions mm -hmm. and so forth. So when you say uh, material handler, you're talking about an all-terrain forklift yes. that we're used to seeing in a construction site. Yeah, you site. see it quite often and quite frequent on uh, most framing projects. Uh, so it was a little bit of a learning curve trying to get through how to actually stage all the material, uh, making sure that we utilize the crane in the right way and the right methods of putting materials where they belong to save the labor force from having to carry it from one end of the project to the other. So we went through a little bit of learning curve on that, but I think for the most part it worked out very well. So when you say we're trying to avoid disturbing the soil here, you mean compaction? Correct. Especially if, uh, if you've ever been on a wet construction site, and I know you have, then we've got these all-terrain forklifts running around, and it, it gets wet, it gets muddy, and then we find ourselves making big ruts right. and compacting the soil, and uh, we can really tear things up. And I mean, including there's a utilities. lot of erosion too. Yeah, erosion control uh, it leads to erosion control problems uh, by allowing that to happen. It also could impact your utilities if you had them 
just put in and you mm -hmm. know it's muddy conditions and you're running this forklift over uh, your electric line for instance or your gas line that you just put in next thing you know you're burying your equipment uh, so I think it's real important that uh, by the process that we did with this is is having a crane on site at all times um, and figuring out the process to make sure that we didn't have to have anything disturbing the soil or compacting the soil for that matter for roach control purposes and the compaction purposes. Mm -hmm. So doing things a little bit smarter, a little bit simpler, uh, keeps the job site cleaner, keeps the city off of our cases because I think we've all had to have a street sweeper come out, yes. <laughs> sweep up the street, got back charged for that because of all the mess. and. Uh, that really is a big part of building a green home, isn't it? That just to to try to plan and yes. execute things a little more sim more simply and and more smoothly, which is what we would hope that the, the purpose of a general contractor is to begin with. But we're just trying to refine those fine points a little bit more. Yeah, I think uh, you'll notice a lot of you know some of the differences. Uh, for instance. Um, you do a material takeoff. Um, most, most for estimating yeah purposes for estimating purposes off. you kind of get your budgets in line and this and the other. Well, the step that you take it next the the next step would be would would actually be to do a layout. Um, take take your flooring for instance or your roof layout. Actually lay it out. Utilize the waste that you know you're going to have in another area and actually mm -hmm. spell it out on a plan. In that way, a framer can. So, okay, if I start here with my framing or my layout or whether you're starting this, the substrate or the, the eye joist and you're running your sheeting through, the off-ball material, the intent is to utilize that material. Um, the house design itself was very friendly in that aspect as well. That was actually taken into consideration when we actually drafted the plan. So it wasn't that mm -hmm. difficult to put together the layouts, but uh, roofing, roofing system, however, was a little more difficult because it's, it's a fairly elaborate roof with a lot of, you know, hips mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. typically harder to uh, consolidate your waste and so forth. But I think with the plan we utilized, uh, that we utilized for the framing, minimized the amount of waste. I think prefabbing your walls uh, utilizes all your waste. They use it for packaging. They use it for you know anything that's left over, any off-fall material gets cut up and used as blocks. So virtually nothing gets wasted by this process. Mm -hmm. And this may be an aside, but most of the Amish guys I've known have always been pretty good about keeping after that stuff. These are career builders, mm -hmm. and they learn all those little ticks, uh, tricks and of the trade over time. And in an ironic twist, now that there's not as much construction going on, it seems like a lot of the people who aren't career are out of the trade. And what's left, what we're left with is, is the few builders that are committed, the few carpenters that are committed, and, and other tradespeople who are going to be in this for the long haul. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's obviously been a difficult market, <laughs> as everyone knows. Um, but, you know, the intent is to continue to try to learn more about the, the available products. Products become available every single day day it seems mm -hmm. like something new has come up that's that's better whether it's more energy efficient whether it's a, a greener product and I think this project has allowed us the, the local community and the suppliers and the vendors to actually tout these new products and uh, allowing them to show us what's available um, and, and, and that's helped us make decisions for this project as far as what materials to use whether it be from engineered uh, lumber, whether it be the type of hardwood, whether it be the type of roof sheeting, felt paper, whatever it may be, house wrap. Um, there's a lot of products out there and based on the information we receive back or uh, ESR reports that we receive or literature that says this is a green product and why and how many mm -hmm. points are available with that product. Points in the HBA it, green build it, system. Yes. And it allows you to, to make the correct decision to achieve the gold certificate, that which, we, which what we're trying to achieve mm -hmm. is a gold certificate and you add them all up and it just helps us. Um, it was a tool to help us put it all together. I think it was um, very well executed and so far it's worked out very well. So part of the framing phase of this construction is to get the, 
the preparation for the outdoor cladding on to waterproof the outside of the building and uh, get the windows in. The siding comes on immediately later, but yes. usually in the framing process, we put the house wrap on and put the windows in. In this case, we're not using house wrap. What, what kind of product are we using we used to an, waterproof the house? Yeah, we use the EnviroDry product, uh, which is basically a polymer um, asphalt-based product. It was, it was applied, it's a spray-on applied type product and it's a moisture resistant uh, barrier is, mm -hmm. is what it was for. It's, it was a great product for allowing uh, moisture vapors to escape, but not allowing moisture to penetrate affecting the sheeting. Um, so as odd as it sounds to people, uh, the vapor of moisture is a tiny, tiny molecule, but liquid water is a larger almost like a droplet right. that can't get through, so we can actually have moisture going out, but not going in. Correct. Which sounds crazy, but it's tested and proved to, yes. to work that way. Uh, the testing has proven to, to actually keep moisture out and allow moisture vapors to escape, which keeps your structural sheathing intact. Um, along with that system, it had uh, straight flashings. Uh, it's complete system. So it's not just you apply, apply this product on the OSB or whatever your substrate is. It, it actually has its own flashings uh, for over windows, doors, seams at your box sill, seams at your gables. So where two pieces uh, of oriented strand board come together, Yes, we tape those up essentially with a piece right. of Right. It would be treated with the same material, but then the flashing would go over that material and then it would be rolled on on top of to get the coverage you would need over the flashing. Um, it's, it's actually been a, it's, it seems to be a great product. Um, it obviously has kept the house dry. I've been out there, the only thing on it, we've just started siding. Uh, we've suffered several rains uh, in the process and since we've had this product on, it's been a completely dry home. And keeping a house dry is especially critical for an energy efficient house. We're trying to get this thing as tight as possible. Yes. And in the past, we used to be able to say, well, we want the house to be a little bit drafty to take care of the moisture that, that inadvertently leaks into the house uh, because we didn't plan as tightly as we could have. Windows weren't installed as carefully as they could have been. Uh, siding and, uh, you know, roof leaks and so on. But with this house, we really have to keep it dry. And so this is the product we've selected and uh, we, we've also got uh, special methods for installing the windows, is that right? Yeah, so I mean, all windows, uh, we're adhering to a flashing detail that to, to keep the water from penetrating around the window. Basically, you have, with the EnviroDry product, they supply the head flashing for any window or door opening. Um, on top of that, once the window is installed, we're, we're using a uh, butylene Vicor tape mm -hmm. uh, window flashing to go around each one and the application of that is is you have to lay it over to where it's never collecting water it's always running down so mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying by that is you, once your head flashing is on which is installed with the EnviroDry you've got your bottom sill flashing that actually tucks into the window frame and hangs down and then you put your sides over your window flanges themselves to where any water that could that would penetrate the siding would be forced onto the EnviroDry product and out. So as long as gravity keeps working, what, what's above stays above, what's below stays below, as we used to say in the mm -hmm. roofing trade. That's and right. uh, as long as we don't have sprinklers spraying water up underneath, then we're safe. Correct. Uh, still, still more stuff to think about, lots of planning still to go on ahead to make sure that all those little details are taken care of. Uh, a green home is maybe as much planning as it is anything else. So wh what else is different or special about these windows? Well, we, we've, uh, the Home Builders Association has selected a triple glazed Symington window. It has a soft coat low E, Krypton glass, um, extremely energy efficient. It carries a U factor of 0 0.20, a solar heat gain coefficient of 0 0.20, um, which is phenomenal in, in any window standard. So for people at, at home, uh, a higher number is bad, Correct. a lower number is better. Energy code would require a 0 0.30 and we're at uh, 0 0.20. I think it, the energy code right now currently is 0 0.35, 0 0.35, I believe. 
Next year it goes to yeah. 0.30. That's that right. Is, uh, and we're at 0 0.20, which is is a great uh, mm -hmm. number. It's it's proven to be a great window. Um, they seem they're very sturdy. They're very energy efficient. Most windows today, uh, I mean, are are just double pane, double glazed Two windows. Glass, you bet. Yeah. Uh, this being that that it's triple. Um, just has a better insul insulating quality, sound quality. Uh, low E was added to the windows. The the height of the windows were placed in design based on the height and the sun and the orientation of the home. Mm -hmm. All that has to take place. So um, we're, we're very happy with our selection so far. So this science of making the overhangs on the house the correct size for your, your geography where you're at, it's always been around maybe a thousand years, but really started to get sharpened in the 1970s during the, the energy crisis, right? Yeah. And so we're seeing that kind of come back as energy prices, which were really low in the 90s or the early 90s, have started to creep up again and, and very visibly for people, anybody who drives a car now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, for sure. So now that the framing phase of construction is complete, then we've got um, the next step for people who don't know how a home really comes together. What do we do next in building a home? Well, obviously we're, we're officially complete with the framing. Uh, the next step would be all your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing trades. Um, you know, once we, now that we're done with framing, the house is cleaned up, they'll take over and put all of their rough-in materials in place. Um, get their inspections and hopefully get this thing super insulated. Right. Again, uh, lots to lots to watch. You know, for me to be there and, and make sure that everything is is coming together. I am helping Fiore yes. keep up after some of this stuff because we're here in Champaign Urbana. Fiore's in Springfield, an hour and a half away. So uh, we're all we're all working together on this, and it's very good to have you here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate uh, your time and uh, your knowledge and your, your uh, participation in the process. Well, thank you. I'm with Fiore Belmonte of Prairie Insulation in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Fiore. Um, like Tony said, I'm from I'm Prairie Insulation out of Springfield. Um, I am a HERS energy rater, which means I can rate, rate houses for Energy Star. And I'm also a green building verifier for the National Association of Home Builders, which kind of brings us together today. We're the, uh, the Home Builder Association here is building a house. They're building it to the gold standard, which means they're doing a lot of great things, which one, will save energy, and two, will make this house more sustainable um, throughout the years to come. So the Home Builders Association nationally has created a green building standard. What, what's that ISO 700? What, what's that called? Correct. They, uh, the uh, National Association of Home Builders is the only association that has a standard recognized by ANSI for a green building standard. And this is a great opportunity for a lot of builders and a lot of homeowners to build something that's different than everybody else because it's gonna be more comfortable and it's gonna save them more money on energy bills and it's gonna last longer because of some of the other measures that are taken. Building durability. It's, it's, it's durable. And I believe the International Code Council has accepted it now as the only green building code as well. That's true. So what, can you tell us a little bit more, I mean, the word green gets thrown around a lot. What does it mean here in an HBA green build? Yeah. In this house, what green means is you're not going to come pull up and see a little bitty shack shaped like a dome. You know, I think a lot of people think green has to be small and compact. And well, this house, when you're going to pull up, you're going to see a beautiful home that looks traditional. Looking traditional, looking looks like the rest of the homes in the neighborhood. But it's going to have some features that the other ones don't. Mainly, you know, the there's lots of things. We'll start from the bottom up. You know, the drainage is managed in a green building home so that all the water that comes in from rain or other sources is drained away from the house. Um, a lot of other homes, that's not part of the plan. You know, these foundations could leak after many years. But with a green build home, this is verified. And we, and we check those things as we go through. And people are real concerned about mold these days, too. A lot of lawsuits for builders. And one more reason for a builder to try to build green. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's just one thing that we're going to see more and more of that mold litigation as, as time goes forth. And if we can eliminate that by a few simple drainage measures, why not do it? And that's, that's a requirement for the green building home program. So if you're buying a house that's certified green, you know those, those standards have been met. Something else that's been done in here is extensive use of 
engineered lumber, which is a, a recycled product. And um, actually, you know, we're going for the gold standard in this house, but in that area throughout this home, the lumber that's used has scored in the emerald level, which is the highest level the NHB has. And so the Home Builder Association has taken great measures to make sure this house is used as many recycled products as possible, which is also part of the green program. You know, there's lots of things out there. We're not going to see a re recycled glass countertop in here. That's not necessary. But the recycled wood content is, is a great deal in this house. So in years past, uh, 50, 100 years ago, at a sawmill, a huge amount of the wood that was cut out of a tree would go right into the boilers and just to create electricity and, and heat to run right. the sawmill with. Today, they take that material, and people might be surprised to know that a conventionally built house has a lot of oriented strand board and timber strand uh, beams and yeah. paralams and lots of other materials like that. We just have a little bit more of it here. A little, a little bit more of it, and it just makes sense that that wood's not getting thrown out and, and used. We, we can use it today. And, and we can see it, if we look around this house, from standing right here, we can see two or three different places where that wood is used. So wood itself is considered a carbon sink which is one more reason why we can cut wood and still call this place green. Exactly right. And we go through a very extensive scoring process. So, you know, we can't just say we threw up some engineered wood and now this house is green. Every aspect of this house, I mean, there's hundreds of questions and checkpoints that we go through to make sure every single thing is met. So the builders can't cheat the system. This is green house from the ground up. Um, the insulation is a recycle, made from re recycled product, and there's more insulation in this house um, than the traditional house. We've got 12 inch stud cavities on this house. We're going to have some real ex um, efficient insulation, drastic reminds. We've got people walking around right now, foam in every gap, every hole, so the air can't get in this house. Which brings to the next question is the house too tight? And, uh, well, you and I know the answer to that, but go ahead and, and You can't tell make a house doctor. too tight, you know. They say the only way you can find out if a house is too tight if you slam the front door and the toilet flushes. But uh, what we want to do is we want to insulate right and ventilate. And so, so it turns out air quality in an energy efficient house is much greater than in a haphazardly built house because we're planning the ventilation. Sorry, we're managing where that fresh air comes in from. Where in a conventionally built house, it's coming in through leaks around windows, leaks in the attic coming through insulation, bringing fibers in the house. Here, everything is sealed, so that can't happen. But then we have an energy recovery ventilator that brings in the air as we need it. It comes through the HVAC system, so it's filtered, clean air, and brings in just the right amount every hour. It's, it's an awesome system. So, uh, speaking of energy efficiency, this is going to be an Energy Star Home also, which is an above-code program that's intended to build homes that are more energy efficient, and more durable, Energy Star is going to become even more stringent in a few months, uh, right. particularly as far as durability is concerned. But tell us a little bit about the Energy Star Homes program. Currently, the Energy Star program says the house needs to be 15% better than the, than the code. This house, in our preliminary tests, should be 30 to 50% more energy efficient than the conventional house. So we're, we're probably going to be closer to that 50% mark. And like Tony said, the air quality is going to be better because we're managing that, and that's a big part of Energy Star. We don't just want to build a tight house, we want to build a house that's healthy. And, um, you know, the program is evolving and evolving. This house will meet the Energy Star standards that will be coming out next January, in, in my estimation, because we're doing things right now that are making that possible. So even though that's not in place yet, we can go ahead and tell people that a big part of Energy Star 3 is uh, water entry but we want to make sure that we can keep water out which enables us to not have to push so much air through the house which is normally needed to keep a conventional house dry so that it doesn't rot and grow mold and fall apart attract termites here in champaign county are a huge issue right. and so we're we're hping then that the building cladding is going to be able to keep moisture out to that standard even though we're not shooting for that standard right. yet. Yeah, we should meet that standard. We put in termite barriers in this building as part of the green program. It's a requirement. It's not a what kind did you put in. It's a required yes or no. Did you put in a permanent termite barrier? So this house is going to stand the test of time. They're using low or no VOC paints, carpets, floor coverings. Um, so we're not going to have any off-gassing of chemicals that could Especially some people who are really hyperallergenic to some of these things, it can really affect them. And this house is not going to be an issue. We're using the right products to make this house healthy. 
So the main thing about green design, energy efficiency design is design, right? Correct. That we're planning the air movement, we're planning the energy use, we're planning the water management. Uh, we're not just allowing things to just kind of fall into place based on how they were always built before. So a lot of thought goes into this. A lot of thought. We've We've started designing and planning this house out long before any shovels hit the ground over here. I mean, this has been months in the process. This plan has been submitted to the National Home Builder Association and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build to this standard. And now we got we got to do it. we got a list 16 pages long of items that we're checking off as we go through on this build. So this house, like you said, it's not wasn't just thrown together. Every aspect of a green built house is planned before you start digging the hole. So what happens after it all gets built? There's a, a rainwater management system? There's a rainwater management system on this house that keeps the rainwater away from the house. There's also going to be a, a rainwater collection barrel here so that you can use that water to water your grass, your garden. So we're not just losing all the rainwater. That water is precious to us. So mm -hmm. we can conserve that water and use it. But the, even the driveway is designed so that the water will drain under it and through away from the house. So everything in this house is designed to keep it dry and durable. So energy auditors are kind of a rare breed. There aren't a lot of us. Of course, Fiore is from Springfield. I'm from Champaign, but we're both HERS Raiders. We're familiar with a lot of the same, well, Energy Star program. Sure. And so uh, we've already gone through this house and seen a few things that, that need to be caught up on before the insulation goes in. So yep. this is what an energy auditor does then. That's what we do. We make sure that the builder sticks to the plan. The plan's been sent out. We're going to build an Energy Star house. We're going to build a house to the NHB green gold standard. So we go through and we make sure that, hey, this needs to be blocked here. These need to be sealed. You need a sheeting behind here. All things that they know they need to do, but that's our job. Just make sure that we verify that everything is done before it's covered up by drywall and no one knows if it happened or not. Well, this place was just a zoo last week. There were electricians and plumbers, heating and cooling guys, all kinds of people running around here just all over each other doing lots of work. And we see that a lot in construction. Sure. Because it's go, go, go. And sometimes that's the best way to get things done. But things do get missed. Somebody has to come through and inspect and, and make sure that things get done right. Right. So it takes a lot of professionals to get a house built anymore. It does, you know, and that's our job to verify those things. And it's been a great coordination and effort to get everybody in here to make this thing happen as fast as it did. You know, we had delays with rain for months before this house gets started and then when it was time to go everybody stepped up and just came in here and got it done and a big part of this project is to educate the trades on how to build more of these houses in the future so right. we are bringing tradesmen through we're bringing the public through uh, during and after construction there will be a lot of talks on on green construction and what methods were used so that uh, we can have more green homes in the future. Right, I think a lot of trades hear that green construction and they think we're gonna have to change everything we do. We're just not gonna be able to do this. When they come in here and say, you know, it, they're, they're small changes. They're not huge changes in the way we do things. They're just small changes and the guys say, you know what, I've done this, we can do this now. It, it's real small changes in what they do. It's not reinventing the whole wheel. Well, this house is not built to the passive house standard. Passive house is a standard that's common in Europe now that uh, came onto the scene about 21 years ago. And uh, the Passive House Institute US, it turns out, is right here in Urbana. Uh, again, this is not a passive house, but in Europe, passive house costs the same to build as right. conventional construction. And it is the standard now. That happened awfully fast, just in 21 years. Well, we see, I think you see it also, Tony, we're heading that way. We need to head that way because energy's not going anywhere but up. Um, we got to conserve our natural resources and just be smart about it. We have good energy sources in our country. Let's just make more use of the energy we have. And we have some national security issues related to do, buying sure. energy from others. I mean, that could happen anytime things could change in that, in that realm. So let's start building a house that uses less energy. Why not? It doesn't cost that much more to do it anymore. Ten years ago, it cost a lot more to do it. Today, the building materials are readily available. We make a few simple changes and the cost is, is nominal and the payback comes back quick. So a traditional home with managed energy, managed water, which is a huge issue all around the country. Some people don't have enough water. Here in Champaign, we've got, we've got plenty. way too much we've got, water. We've got plenty, more than we need. And it all needs to be thought of. Water issues are getting bigger, energy issues are getting bigger, yet people want 
a more comfortable home with better air quality, we're able to deliver all of that right here at the HBA Greenville. We can do it all right here, and people are going to see that as they come through. They're going to see a beautiful finished home that's very comfortable, no drafts, very efficient, and going to be standing longer than a lot of the houses in this neighborhood. It's going to be a uh, people are going to love it when they come through. Well, thank you. Thanks, You're doing Tom. some very important work, Fiore, and uh, glad to talk to you. We'll be seeing you more in as future. we uh, can complete the project. All right. Thanks, Tony. All right, thank you.